Hey everyone, it's Deja from CrochetOverAfter.com. Today we're going to be doing this kind of uh, sunflower medallion wagon wheel cluster kind of motif that I've made up here. It's using some worsted weight yarn and I'm using an H hook of 5mm so that it gets kind of stiff. I want it stiffed, stiffed, I want it stiff and not very pliable so it's more of like an applique. But you can use a J-hook if you want it more drapey, so if you want to connect these and make a shawl or a scarf out of them, you can. But grab your yarn, your hook, and the pattern is in the link below, and we'll get started. Alright, to get started on our motif, we're going to go ahead and put a slip knot on our hook. And we're going to make an open ring. So to do that, we're going to chain six. Normally for open rings, you chain four, but I want kind of a bigger open ring than normal, so I'm going to chain six for this one. Plus we're putting a lot of double crochets inside the center ring, so I'm going to make sure I have enough room. So as always, to begin a chain is yarn over from back to front. I grab my tail to kind of help keep my loop in place as I pull my chain through, and then I push my chain to my shaft. So I do that two, oops, and I lost it completely, two, three, As always, when we join our ring, it doesn't really matter where you insert your hook into that first chain that you made because everything's going to get covered up with our motif working in the round. So just stick your hook in there. I usually grab the back loop and then lay over your yarn. This is technically a yarn over, so if you're looking at it this way, it's kind of a full yarn over. But you're usually kind of already halfway there, so you just kind of lay it over the top of your hook. And then grab it with your hook and pull through the chain and then pull through the loop on your hook. So now we've got our ring. It's nice and big and open, easy to see. And we can start our round one instructions. So for round one, we're going to chain three and that's going to count as our very first double crochet. And then we're going to start making clusters. So for the very first one, because technically all of these clusters should be a DC 3 together, which means double crochet 3 together. We're doing a DC 2 together because this counts as one of our 3 that should be all connected. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to put our hook through the center. And we're going to grab our yarn and pull it up. And then we're going to do the first step or the first yarn over and pull through the first two loops and stop. Now to finish our DC 2 together, we yarn over and we go back into our circle to do our second double crochet. So we grab our yarn and pull that up, yarn over and pull through the first two. Now we have three loops on our hook. We're not working these off two at a time because this is a DC two together. We're going to take everything off at once. So I'm going to yarn over, put my hook down to get through all my loops nice and easy and pull through all of them. So that's going to create my first cluster. Now between each cluster that we do, a little ball of yarn, get some more slack from you, we're going to chain three. We're going to do three chains, one, two, and three, and then we're going to do another cluster, but this time the DC is going to be DC three together, so we're going to do our combo three times. So we're going to yarn over, go through the center, grab our yarn, pull it up, work off the first two loops, and then stop yarn over, go back in, pull up our loop, work off the first two, stop again, yarn over, go back in for our last one, pull up your loop, yarn over, pull through the first two. Now because we have a DC3 together, we have four loops on the hook, so we're going to get all those off at one time by yarning over, point your hook down, if you keep it like this and you start pulling, you're going to get stuck on your loops. So if you point it straight down at your stitch, you kind of get that sweet spot right between your loops that you can pull right through. So pull through all four, and now you have your second cluster. So you can see I kind of pulled all of them together into one stitch. We're doing this combo, chain three and DC three together, nine times. So we're going to do eight more times. So we're going to chain three, and start our DC three together again. Go through the first two, stop. Go through the second two, stop. Go 
through the third two, and then go through everything. So we're going to do that now seven more times. So just kind of pull this around as you're going to make more room in your loop. But keep going around for the next seven clusters, and then we'll meet up um, right before we join. Okay, I'm on my ninth cluster, and technically I have ten clusters all together now because this first one with the BC2 together counts as one of my clusters. So the last instruction is to chain three because we don't want to join it right here because then we'll have a big old cluster with all these other chain three spaces. So we have to chain three to make the same space as the rest of our clusters have. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch in the top of our chain three. So once we do that, we're going to fasten off because I want to do a new color. A slip stitch and then I fasten off by making a big long chain and play it tight. And then I cut the chain and pull this back through. It doesn't have to be super long, just long enough so it's easy for you to weave in at the very end. I'm going to use that color again on the last round. Now I'm going to switch over to gray. Just because it's easier to see on camera. Otherwise I'm fixing much darker, cooler colors. So, our next instruction, we're going to be filling in all of these spaces here. And what I'm going to do to join my new color, I, if you see a lot of my motif tutorials, I join lots of different ways. This is kind of like the most basic join. This is just a regular slip stitch join. So you put a um, slip knot on your hook, and then go any one of your chain three spaces, just insert your hook all the way through, grab your yarn, lay it over the top so you can grab it with your hook, and pull it up, just flip your tail out of the way, oops, I don't want to my tail, flip your tail out of the way, so that you can take that loop you just pulled up and pull it right through the loop on your hook, and that's a slip stitch join, and you just tighten it down because it doesn't count as a stitch, it's just joining up your yarn to your old color. So now our instructions tell us that we're going to chain three. So again our chain three counts as a double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet or double, <laughs> I can't say it right, DC2 together in our chain three space here below. Okay, So this is like another cluster. So we're going to start with a DC2 together, but the rest of them around our round is going to be a DC3 together. So we're going to go ahead and do our DC2 together. And then we're going to start spacing out. So we're going to chain 5, because we're going to make a big, um, fast circle here. So I'm chaining 5, 3, 4, and 5. And then I'm going to do a DC3 together in my next chain 3 space. So now we're going back to what we did in our original circle, but we're just doing one in this chain 3 space. So yarn over, pull up, stop, go to your next one, stop again, and do a third, and pull through everything. And then we're going to go to our next space, so we're going to chain 5 again. So we're going to do this nine times again so we can fill in all of our spaces that we have. So keep on going around with your DC3 together and then chain five. And we'll meet up right at the end so we can do the last round together. Alright, I'm in my last space. I wanted to do it with you so you can see if you're having this problem, when you go into your double crochet or your DC3 together, you might see that your your chain wants to stay where it's at. It kind of folds over your hook. Just pull it back and it'll pull that loop up. So when it starts rolling around, just push it back. Or even if you leave it there, but pull through just those first two loops and then push, it writes itself. So you can do either way. You can either push it back as you're working the beginning of your double crochet like that and then do your two or you can just start working all the way 
through those first two loops and it'll kind of push it right back to itself. Just kind of go slow and then pull up and you'll see it pop back. So that is a little tip if you find that happening. As I noticed as I was going around, I kept doing that every single time. So here's my last DC3 together. And then, just like the last round, we need to put some chains between these first and last. So we're going to do five again. Four and five. And then connect it with that slip stitch in the top of the chain three. I'm going to fasten off of this because I'm going to go back to my blue for our last round. I'm a good little wagon goofy wheel here. And then the last round is really super easy. It's all single crochets. So I'm going to get my blue back. And we're going to join in with the slip stitch again just to keep it consistent. And check out my other tutorials if you want to learn how to do standing stitches and different joins like that. So we're going to join wherever we want. Kind of make it to the right of one of your spaces. We're only working in the chain spaces. We're not working into this stitch that was made by the DC3 together, so ignore those. We're just crocheting around all the chains. So kind of join to the right of one because we're going to put seven single crochets in here. So we're going to go through the center, grab the yarn, pull it up, and then pull through the loop on our hook. There's our slip stitch again. Go ahead and chain one to begin your round, and then start doing seven single crochets in every chain five space. So one, you reach all the way through, you're going all the way around the chain. You just kind of pull them to the right as you're working, or to the left if you're left-handed. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This is going to crowd your chain five, and that's the point to kind of cover up the DC3 that we're not working into. It's kind of going to go right over the top. So I did seven, and I'm going to insert my hook into the next chain five space and start seven over there. So you'll see that they kind of all meet together, but kind of give a little scalloped edged, edged, <laughs> scalloped edge at the end. So do seven single crochets in every chain five space, and we'll meet up at the end. Alright, I'm on number seven of my final seven. Now I'm ready to join, so I'm going to join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet, not the chain one space, but the first single crochet I made. So I go into both loops, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on my hook. And I'm going to go ahead and fasten that off, and I've got six ends to weave in. Alright, so I'm going to grab my yarn needle and weave in these ends. Just stick to your, well let me, I'll do some of the gray with you so you can see how to hide it because there's not a lot of gray to be seen in this area. So let me get that out so you can see how to do that. I've got my yarn needle. I'm going to start with this gray piece here so you can see how to weave that in if you don't have a lot of gray. It's actually really quite easy. So. What you have, though, is a lot of blue covering the gray, so you can start working your way up your stitches. So remember to work kind of back and forth. So for this, I'm going to go really short stitches and go back and forth a lot. Start getting them stuck. And then I'm going to come out right next to where the blue is going on. And I'm going to go all the way underneath all of these blue stitches. Let's find a spot that's good. If you can't make it all the way across, you can come out. Just try not to split your blue. You can come out in the middle, so it's kind of a long way to go. Then just go back in. So pull out your tail, and then go back in and come back out again. So it's completely covered. So you can't see any of that gray under there because the blue is covering everything. And then you can just go back and forth down your next cluster stitches this way, a couple stitches that way, and you're ready to cut it. So that was a good weave in, very easy. The blue, you keep in the blue, you have a lot more blue. Same thing with this blue up here, you can just run it through the stitches, you can't really see it. 
So we'll go ahead and weave in everything else, and then we'll take a look at the finished product. All right, I got my tails weaved in, and the motif is done. See it lays flat, even though it was all kind of bunchy in the beginning. So this is a pretty good size. It's bigger than my palm. I'll give the exact measurements on the pattern. So you can check that out below. And thank you all for watching.